Starting off, let's select the Photoshop brush and then let's go over to the brush settings. Now you'll notice up here you've got a few options which you can also find in the brush settings like for example the different brush tips and if you click this you can click this arrow and then you'll have all of these other different brush libraries to select from that you can get from Google or just about anywhere there's thousands of different brushes and hundreds of different sites that have them. Now if you're using Photoshop because you want to paint something or get into illustrating then really you're going to want to have probably three different brushes that you'll primarily use. One for sketching that will work like a pencil. It will allow you to press lightly with your tablet and make some sketch marks and then go back and press harder to make your more finalized lines. And then you'll want another brush that'll be for inking which will be more of a solid line uh, specifically meant for drawing final lines for an artwork. And then you'll want a paintbrush, which will work kind of like an airbrush, so you'll be able to add soft you know, lights and shadowing to different parts of the illustration that you're working on. So starting off, let me show you how to set up your brush. The three primary things you're going to want to pay attention to are the brush hardness, which, let me make the diameter bigger so you can see in the preview how it affects it. See how soft it looks right now? If I increase the hardness, then it's going to get harder and harder until you have a solid line. Now, for a pencil, I like to have it at anywhere between like 60 and 70 percent, someplace in there. Uh, then you've got a fairly thick line, but it's still got a little bit of a soft edge, which to me feels more like a pencil. And then in shape dynamics, I'll have the size jitter set to pr pen pressure, which basically means if I press lightly, I'm going to get a thin line. If I press hard, I'm going to get a thick line. And then in other dynamics, you'll want to turn on the opacity jitter, which again, if I press light, I get a light line, like right in here. And if I press hard, then I'll get a dark line, like right in here. Once these are set up, put your tablet in hand and test out your brush to make sure it's the way you like it, which that's actually not bad, but I prefer to have a smaller tip. So one way to easily adjust is to use the bracket keys on the keyboard that are right above the enter button. If you press the left bracket key, then it'll get smaller. The right bracket key will make it bigger, which comes in handy when you're wanting to quickly change the tip of your brush. And that way you don't have to come up here and change the master diameter or come over here to your brush tip shape and change it here. You can just use the keyboard and quickly alter the size of it. <clears throat> now of course you'll want to use this brush over and over and you don't want to always have to come in here and set it up and make it just right. So once you have it the way you want it, come over here, click this little down arrow and then click on this new icon. And that'll allow you to rename the brush to whatever you want hit OK, and now it appears in this list. So anytime you want to use it, no matter what brush you're using, if you've got one of your special brushes loaded and you're painting dragons all over the place, and you decide, hey, I want to make the mustache on this one bigger, well, then you can go and click your tool, and you've got it set up just the way you had it before. Now, I don't need that, so I'm going to delete it. Now the next tool that you'll want is your inking tool. Oh, also usually when I sketch with the pencil, I have the opacity down to about 30% or so. That way I can lightly sketch out the outline of, say, a person's head or something, and then go back in and start adding the more defined details. And... I am obviously not really trying on this. I'm just going to make a crazy anime character really quick. Give him a little nose, little eyebrows, a couple horrible eyes, and a little grin. Okay, so there's my horrible anime character. Now, to give you an example, let's say that you wanted to ink this horrible thing for some reason. 
then you switch to your inking tool, which I have set up with a hardness of almost 100%, size jitters turned on, and the opacity jitter is turned off. That way I don't get any stray lines that, well, look like pencil marks. And then usually I'll switch to my black, and of course I want a smaller tip. I would use the bracket keys right now, but I'm holding the mic, which makes it a little bit difficult. And whenever you make your strokes, you really want to think about, that's a horrible line, but you really want to think about uh, how, you, how much pressure to apply. Obviously, when you get towards the base of something, usually it's a little bit thicker, and it gets thinner as it goes up, so you press lighter. Again, these are horrible lines. Normally, I would ink an illustrator, because illustrator actually has a feature that whenever you draw a line, it semi-smooths it out for you and makes it look nicer, which gives you a much better end result and makes it a little bit easier to sketch the lines. So I usually do all of my inking in illustrator. Then I'll come back in with Photoshop. Let me very quickly make a couple of like inking lines. Again, I am not really trying on these. This isn't to <coughs> demonstrate art techniques. This is just to explain the concept so that way you can get an idea of how to use the tools. All right, so. Let's say that's our guy. And now we want to paint him. Well, then you would switch to your paintbrush, which I have set up with hardness almost down to 0%, the size jitter set to pin pressure on, and also the opacity jitter set to pin pressure on. And again, whenever I use the paintbrush, I'll set the opacity way down, so that way I'm softly adding shadows into the areas where I want them. If you try to add shadows too quickly or try to turn it up too much, then you'll find it makes it a little bit more difficult to get the results that you want. Things get a little bit harsher. Sometimes you want to increase the opacity depending upon the effect you want, but for the most part you want to work with it kind of down. All right. So now that you have a general idea of how some of the tools in Photoshop work, let's move over to Illustrator and I'll show you how to set up your pen brush so that way you can actually ink 